Uh, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm a recent graduate from UT Austin. Uh, I'm a postdoc here. Uh, this talk is more like a summarized uh, part of my work during my PhD study. I'm not going to focus on a specific paper. I'm just going to uh, tell you some of, some of the results I proved uh, during my PhD. Uh, let's start. Uh, so the first topic I'm going to talk about is called the optimization. Like, uh, of course, like all the topics are related to matrix and very good matrix and the vector B and C. And the goal is to want to minimize C transpose X and such that uh, AX equal to B and uh, X equal to zero. And also, if you have a matrix, a bunch of matrix and a bunch of data, and you can ask like uh, if you can train different neural networks to be from a global minimum. And another topic I want to say is like called concentration. And in general, we know if you sum a bunch of random variables, they are concentrating on the expectation. And if you sum like a bunch of random matrices, what do they look like? And also, I'm also divide, uh, develop some algorithm for matrices. Like uh, for example, if you give a matrix A and you want to factorize the matrix A to be two low rank matrix U and V. And uh, another task is uh, where you have a ground truth vector X and you want to design a matrix A and you can only observe your vector Y and the goal is to recover this X. I will first talk about the optimization part. Uh, this are the drawn work based on Michael Cohen, Inta, and also Toyen, Alan Drew, and uh, Yuan Zhili. So our first start is a linear program. So what is the definition of linear program? Uh, you give a matrix and uh, two vectors. And here is a concrete example of a uh, linear program in two dimension. And if you give a blue matrix A and the vector B, and uh, they are going to form a convex body in this uh, two dimension. And then, if, for example, if your vector C is like this, and you're going to decide the angle of your line, and the goal of linear program is trying to push this line until you, close, until you touch this boundary. Then we call this all the linear program. So the history of linear program is quite long. It's like a date back to 200 years before. And uh, the early time algorithm called a uh, very famous algorithm called Simplex algorithm. This algorithm has very efficient uh, performance in practice, but it has very bad uh, thing in theory. It has equivalent it equivalent time due to some current example. And then the question is like how fast can we solve linear program? And uh, in 1979, the first polynomial time algorithm is uh, due to Lambda Kitchen. <coughs> it is the first polynomial time algorithm. It roughly runs in, into a sixth time. And uh, since 1989, Vidya's algorithm, uh, the, 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 LP, the fastest LP algorithm uh, remains to into 2.5. And here, L is the number of bits for each, mat in the, each entry of the matrix. And for the worst case, if a matrix is dense and full rank, and we cannot, we cannot beat this barrier. So recently, we can show that uh, you can actually solve linear program into omega time, where omega is equivalent to matrix multiplication. Omega means like if I give you two like a, a square matrix, each of side has size n by n, and you want to multiply this matrix to output another n by n matrix, uh, the time is n to omega. So we believe like uh, naively it can be done in cube time, and then we believe it can be done like in square time somehow. But currently, the best constant we know is two point three seven two. Uh, here is an interesting picture, like how the history of uh, we compare the history of linear program and the machine location. and the y x axis is the time and the y axis is equivalent of n on n. And at the beginning, like uh, we know, it can be done in uh, trivially by n cube time, and then like uh, people keep pushing this bound, and at some point they believe two point five is probably the right answer, and then we actually we can um, break this air barrier. And uh, however, like uh, over the last thirty years. Uh, this is always in really sucks, and the last, the most recent three papers, their progress is only like a 0 0.001. Mm -hmm. Okay, basically not making any progress, and it still remains the same. Like, uh, okay, and for linear program, uh, at the beginning we know like it runs in exponential time, and uh, then we know it can be done in polynomial time, and then we can push it to 3.5, and also at some point like we believe uh, Vidya's algorithm is probably the best thing. It takes it into 2.5. And also, it's also the same thing happens remains like uh, uh, 30 years, and we, don't, we couldn't like, uh, beat this like a uh, 2.5 barrier. And recently, like uh, we can show, uh, if you want to solve linear program, it actually you just need into omega time. And the reason why this is almost uh, the, the end of world because if you just want to solve linear equation with all those constraints, just like I want to solve ax equal to b, the best uh, algorithm we know is also into omega time. 
Uh, next, I will talk about some like a neural network thing. Uh, this is John work with Zoe and Yanzhi. And we can prove like uh, if you make some reasonable assumption on neural network, like uh, if you assume data are separable and neural network is wide enough, if you run SGD or gradient descent, you can actually find a global mean minimum. So basically, my feeling of neural network is just doing some memorization and not doing anything else. But this is just my personal feeling. Many people don't agree. Uh, so I'm not a very good expert on this type of work and. Uh, yeah, if you want to work on this topic, I would suggest you talk to Simon Du and uh, Jason, and they have some talks online. They have, I'm, I'm pretty sure they are like a more expert on me than me on this thing. Um, next, I'm going to talk about some like a uh, concentration thing, like a very uh want to add a bunch of matrices, and we want to show the concentration. And this is drawn work with Anke Garb, Inta, and uh, Nikhil Sylvester, and Rasmus and Kaldu. So I will start a, a scalar version of Chernobyl. So Chernobyl is actually named, named by someone, but not proved by the same person. It's very funny. But we can't use the same name. And the scalar version is very classical. And you have a bunch of random variables. And they are, they are between 1 and 0. And you want to say like uh, the summation of those random variables is actually concentrated on their expectation. And it's hyperbolic. <coughs> So this type of bond is used like in almost every like a randomized related algorithm paper in theoretical computer science, and people use usually use it without even stating the bond because it's too classical. And a natural generation of this one is like called a matrix Chernobyl bond, and uh, instead you can actually just ask uh, what if you uh, add a bunch of random matrices and what does that look like? So this problem has been like I mean, matrix Chernobyl bond has been developed by a long line of long, a, a lot of people, and uh, I just hit here just to give you one example of the matrix churn bond. There are actually so many variations, you can actually see the Trump survey. <coughs> and here you give a bunch of uh, a matrices, and there are also like a, a bunch of independent random Bernoulli signs. And uh, you want to ask the probability of uh, the spectral norm of uh, summation of epsilon i times ai at least a t is at most n times the equivalent of negative t squared minus roughly the variance of all the uh, matrices somehow. And this is just one special case. And uh, the reason, so if you look at the trauma survey, like uh, most of this uh, uh, matrix Chernobyl bond are being well studied, like uh, already. If, we, if you assume like all the matrices are random, are random are, like independent. But if there are some cases, all the, ran all the matrices are not independent. And also, there are some cases the matrix has spe very special structure. And if, are, if, you, if you just apply the naive, like a uh, matrix Chernobyl bond, you won't get your benefit. Okay, here I give you a con concrete example. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So here is a concrete example, like a single you have graph, and let's say the graph is unweighted for easy case. And you can actually write down all your spanning trees in a pool. This is a pool has like a could have a potential number of spanning trees, but we don't care running time. And now I'm going to define a distribution called random spanning tree distribution. Every time I am going to draw a random, I'm going to draw a spanning tree from this pool with equal probability. And the question like is uh, if I draw like how many spanning trees I need to draw and I, I want to say like their average is going to pretty much close to their graph. So in a sense, like uh, in a follow equation, like uh, the LG is going to be a Laplacian matrix of a graph. And for any graph, you can write down a diagonal matrix. But each, the diagonal is just uh, the degree of each vertex. And uh, also uh, uh, adjacent matrix. And so LG is just uh, like the uh, diagonal matrix, diagonal matrix at minus the adjacent matrix. So this equation is saying like if you have like uh, enough spanning trees, and they are pretty much like a look like an original graph. So this, there are a long line of work on both like general graph specifier or like all general random spanning tree, but there are like a, we cannot see any connection between these two for many years. And in my work with Rasmus King, we can show like a t equal to log n square over epsilon square is actually sufficient, and the lower bound is actually log n over epsilon square. So there is a there is a gap between these two. We don't know how to close this gap right now. So another way of thinking like a concentration is like a, a not real concentration is called discrepancy. And there is a famous theorem called uh, by a famous paper called stand, sixth generation proved by Spencer um, and years ago. And he claiming the following result. Like if I give you a bunch of vectors, and it could be anything, and then he claims there exists a vector uh, epsilon uh, lies in minus one, minus one plus one to the n, such that for every j in n, and aj minus epsilon, aj time dot epsilon is actually at most six times the square root. 
So this re this result can be like uh, implemented by also using internal bound, but the but you will pay you have to pay a log n factor. When you use run when you use internal bound, you need to like uh, argue like uh, because you you have like uh, n n different a j and you need to like uh, apply the union bound for all the j's and you to make sure you are probability enough to take a union bound, you need to pay an extra log n factor. So basically, Spanner theorem is saying like uh, the power of the Spanner theorem is just uh, beating the union bound here. So there is another famous conjecture uh, called like a uh, matrix Spencer conjecture, and I'm not sure this is explicitly written in some papers, but I so this uh, can be found in a blog, blog, blog uh, written by Roku Mecca. And the statement following: If I give you a bunch of matrices and they are all spectral at most of one, and then there exists a vector epsilon such that the summation of this vector summation of this uh, epsilon i times ai is actually equal to all of root n. So this this statement can be implemented by like a maternal bound, matrix maternal bound. If you want, to, if you don't care about root n log factor, root log n factor, but if you just uh, want to use root n, we don't know how to prove. We don't know how to prove this thing. What is the norm? Spectral norm. So what is that? Uh, if you if you have a matrix and you take SVD, and you have a diagonal matrix in the middle, and uh, the, the, the the largest entry on the diagonal is your spectral norm. Yeah, at some point, like we are trying to, uh, Rossmann and Kyle and we are trying to prove this conjecture, but we somehow failed. But we can actually get something else, which is not too bad. So this is something related to like a, uh, uh, kind of similar conjecture. So here you give a bunch of vectors, and you assume each of them like has the max norm bounded, and their summation has to be equal to identity. And then you can show like something like a, a discriminant result. Like you can say there exist signs such that the summation of epsilon i times e, this is rank one matrix rank one. Matrices is equal at most like all of the sigma. So what we can prove is that we can actually somehow weaker the condition like uh, what he assumed in the statement, uh, re replacing like the summation of identity to be we don't need that condition, and also instead of assuming each entry is bound, each vector is bounded, we just need the summation of all the squares is bounded. And uh, we can show a four here, and uh, we call our paper like a uh, four standard deviation suffice compared to six somehow. Yeah, here and all, yeah. Here you also can actually the thing. The reason why we do this one is because if you use a turn up one, you have to pay a root log n, log m factor. M is the number of vectors. So usually we use m and n. We use m denote. Yeah, progress my slides actually somehow. Uh, usually we use m to denote the number of random matrices and n denotes the number of the dimension of matrices. But sometimes for simplicity, I just uh, assume m and n are equal. Yeah, but here I, I forgot to change them. Sorry. Yeah, I'm also doing some organ stuff like compressed sensing and sprout Fourier transform. And then. How is that? Was your proof constructed? <laughs> your proof of the previous theorem. Oh, that's what you did. No. Was it given weighted? No. There are, so the thing is, uh, uh, currently we don't know any algorithm, we, get, we don't know any like uh, even sub independent algorithm for, current, for the kind of similar conjecture. So we will use the, yeah we use the same we follow the same like interleasing family technique yeah okay. if you can if you can give that will be very big result I think yeah I don't know how to do that yeah I also think about it but I don't know how to do it I'm also doing some like compressed sensing and sparse Fourier transform uh the nice thing of this thing is it is actually related to linear program recently I noticed some connection so first thing is like a uh, one of my LP paper is, the way we speed up is we use we use some simple Fourier matrix matrix. And if you know the literature of spot recovery, the first method proposed by one people is they are actually using LP, linear program. And uh, very, very recently, we noticed that actually use, if you use spot recovery, it also can actually speed up linear program. So here I just give you like a, a basic uh, introduction of the spot recovery. I give you a bunch of parameters, the epsilon is the accuracy, and the k is the sparsity, and n is the length of vector. And you have a ground truth vector x, and go to design some matrix phi, and also recover algorithm A. And we want to output another vector x prime, such that x prime is a very good approximation to original vector x, in terms of this guarantee. So this this prime is like a, this, this is called like a, a compressed sensing or L two L two compressed sensing is actually initiated by uh, Donald Ho and Kenders Rangren Tao in two thousand six. So you're like a, if this if we can 
Usually in the setting, if we have, if we have a lot of design, it's a fine matrix, the problem we call like compressed sensing. And if we find we cannot, we are not allowed to delaw. It has to have some structure like a fully like a fully event, it has to be like a subsample fully matrix is actually corresponding to a sparse Fourier transform. So here I just to show you the result, like uh, uh, we can get the optimal measurements and uh, compared to the progress result, we can also uh, improve the encoding time and the decoding time. The encoding time is actually calling sparsity of fan matrix, and which means when you have a sensing device, whenever you have a new observation, you can quickly update your uh, measurements. And the decoding time is the actual time you actually eventually find your uh, ground truth x. So the main game of this field is that you want to shave the logs. And for the case, like uh, your matrix has to be a uh, fully matrix, and you have to do, uh, your algorithm has to be different. And uh, so usually there are two approach. Uh, one is you use like, one is just a random subsample of a bunch of uh, rows of fully matrix. Then they, they use the RIP property to run the interview hard thresholding. And the other technique is they are smartly select the rows and uh, they are using fit some feature techniques. And we developed some new techniques which, which is not like any of the before. And we can actually give the like a near optimal like a sample complexity. And uh, our sample sample is in some sense is good uh, in a way like uh, if you have to recently someone put a lower bound for RIP, and if you want to use RIP approach to do this job, and you have to RIP has to need like a k log k log and samples, which means our technique our sample complexity roughly is nearly optimal somehow. So I also done some other research like not related to matrices and uh, like for example longest common subsequence, and uh, the the task is just you give like two strings and you want to compute the, the longest sequence which is common to both the sequence may not be necessary to be continuous, and very classical textbook algorithm by doing dynamic programming it just runs in like n square time, and uh, if if the if the binary if you are if your string is binary like uh, you can just uh, do some trivial counting it takes a linear time. So for a long time, there is nothing between these two algorithms. And we can actually give something like a, like a 2 minus like a something 1 over 220 and then like into the 1 minus 19. And recently, we proved this is possible, actually. I'm also doing some, OK, oh, by the way, I'm going to give a talk on this topic uh, tomorrow on, on Princeton CS group. Uh, if you are interested, you can join. Uh, I'm also doing some other research, uh, like a deep learning and rainfall learning. I'm also doing deep learning learning. I'm also doing quantum. I'm also doing quantum deep learning learning. <laughs> <laughs> this is just joking. <laughs> yeah, okay, here I just saw some non research. I really like uh, AS. The reason is like uh, I feel it's good and every time a lunch is different. And it, it would be very good if there is also <laughs> dinner and. Uh, <laughs> because I opened the Uber and I couldn't find the Uber Eats. And uh, I don't know what to where to eat in the night. Okay, it will be also nice if there can be free lunch. I'm not sure it's possible. And maybe it's harder than writing a paper with everyone here. Okay, okay. There are some friends like uh, they want to make advertisement. Okay, sometimes when Pala told me there is a hiring in Georgia Tech, they are focused on some theory hiring, and they have some. Uh, if you have, if you know some students, they want to do a summer inter, they can apply at Master Redmond. There are a lot of great people there. They have Zoyan, Zoyan already doing like automation, but he is doing deep learning now. And Sebastian Black, he is doing Marty and Bennington and convex automation before, he is also doing deep learning now. And Jerry, he is doing like a learning mixture of distributions and a robust algorithm. He is also focused on deep learning now. And in that direction, he was doing sketching and streaming and the uh, nearest neighbor search, and he is also doing deep learning now. This is a very like a deep learning group, I think. I have a friend, he's on John Market, Sam Kofkins. He's on from UW and a PhD from Cornell and currently at Berkeley. And uh, he's doing some squares and instead of learning a robust algorithm. And uh, yeah, also Simon do it. He, he's sitting there, he's also on a job market. And uh, he's on the graph from Berkeley and a PhD from CMU and currently at S. And he's doing a lot of like a fancy machine learning stuff, which I don't understand. You should talk to him directly. Okay, thank you. <laughs>